Greetings Wanderer, and welcome back to Lonely TTRPG, the solo actual play and review podcast. This week we are playing To Keep Ghosts Alive by Sandra Catherine. To Keep Ghosts Alive is a solo journaling role-playing ritual about the subjects of our love and how mercy To Keep Ghosts Alive is a solo journaling role-playing ritual about the subjects of our love and how the memory of them will fade in time. This game deals with hard topics like loved ones that are not in our lives anymore, fading memories and grief. Pause if you need a break. Start over when you feel like it. Let it rest for an hour, a day, a week. Take the time that you need. Speaking of needs, to play this game, we are going to need pen and paper or a digital writing pad, a D6, a coin, and optionally six candles or tea lights we are not going to be playing with the candles or tea lights because then it will be too dark for the recording but before we dive on in to looking at the rest of the game first and foremost i want to thank you all for joining me today i am steel stash your host if you enjoy this please subscribe leave us a like a comment that sort of thing really help the algorithm and share with a friend because right now we are all word of mouth all right, diving on into this game. But memories are time beings too, like cherry blossoms or ginkgo leaves. For a while they are beautiful, and then they fade and die. Ruth Ozeki. Memories are volatile. Capturing them on paper may help you remember. They may keep our loved ones in our mind's eye. But someday you may wake up and realize you cannot recall their voice, their smell, their face. Gone and forgotten. Memories can be about a lot of things. Memories can give you a positive feeling or make you regret the lost time. Memories can be recalled in an instant or forgotten forever. Choose the subject of your memory. Who or what do you not want to forget? You can come up with the subject on your own or choose one from the list below, rolling a d6. At this point, if you want, you will light your candles. All right, and once you got that, it looks like you're going to be rolling a D6 to describe how you feel about some of this stuff. So with all of that, we will go ahead and dive right on into our gameplay. So first things first, we need to decide what memories we don't want to forget. So we're going to let fate decide and roll 1D6. And we got a four. Four is going to be a friend. So first off, first off, we need to choose our friend name. We need to choose our friend name. Hmm. Let me go with Mark the Magician. He was a, he was a character in one of my first D&D campaigns. And he was highly, highly amusing. Very good time for him. In fact, I ended up writing my, running my first one shot based on some goals for Mark. So Mark, the magician, very important member or very important character in my development in TTRPGs and kind of how I ended up where I am today, because again, my first one shot, the memory fades and I am left hanging on the ghosts of his words. Marie Lou. All right. So a memory of a loved one or friend is constructed from different sensations or observations by rolling a D six. You determine which part of the loved one you want to try to recall, write down the details and what triggered that memory. All right. So we got ourselves a six, which is a dominant emotion. Describe the emotion that comes up first. When you remember them, is it positive or negative? Does it give a physical reaction? Does this feeling get triggered by the memory or the other way around? All right. So like I was saying, Mark was just an all around great dude. Most of, most of what I recall about him was his joyous nature. And he did give feelings of happiness. And I'm going to say that the memory of Mark triggers the feelings and not the other way around. Sometimes you wake up and even though you try very hard, you're not able to recall their voice, their scent, or what they look like. 
whether you remember it or not seems arbitrary. Like the toss of a coin, an obol for Charon to take your memory with you or leave them on the banks of the river. Toss a coin. Heads, you can recall the memory. Tails, the memory is lost forever. So we're going to go ahead and just roll a d6. High will be heads, low will be tails. And we got a six, outstanding. So we were able to remember our feelings, the joyous nature of Mark. All right, and so from here on out, you are just going to continue to build this out. You're going to continue to roll your d6. You're going to come up with new memories. You're going to flip your coin. Now, on tails, on tails, you would scratch that entry off. Not only are you unable to remember it, you can have no more memories for whatever that prompt is. And then if you're playing with candles, you would also snuff out one of your candles. So moving back along, let's go ahead and see what memory we get next. That is going to be a two. And that's going to be a smell or scent. Describe their scent. What does it compare to? Was it heavy or light? Was it sweet or almost undetectable? How did it make you feel? What smell made you think of them? So this is a tough one because like I said, this was a uh, this was a D and D character, and he never really described his scent. Now, given who the character was and how he was, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say he had a I'm gonna go ahead and say he had a sweet smell, sort of like candy. And this was, this would have been partly offset. Like it would have seemed even more so because A, he did keep it like when we were going through the dungeon of the mad mage, he was always making sure to take care of himself. And B, his companion that he was traveling with was not the best smelling. So by comparison, he definitely smelled even better. But let's go ahead and see if we will be able to remember that. Once again, high heads, low tails. That is a low. So unfortunately, I do not remember his scent. And now I also would cross that off of my list. So I can only highlight it, but as you can see, I would just, just go ahead and cross it off. And next up, what memory are we at Jeopardy of now? Five, favorite activity. Describe their favorite activity. What did they like to do? So I really remember that they really enjoyed using prestidigitation. They like to use prestidigitation. They like to cause the little fireworks and sparks, you know, just spread joy and cheer with harmless light effects. Or at least that is what I would remember. Except I can't seem to, I can't seem to recall what they enjoyed doing. It's been a, it's been a long time and try as I might try as I might, I cannot pull the memory up. That is just, that's just another thing that has faded. So once again, we need to cross off that particular thing from our list. All right. Next memory. We roll the five because it's already crossed off. We will re-roll six, another dominant emotion. Another dominant emotion. So that is going to be the pain of their death, the pain of their passing. Because we were, we were crawling through a dungeon. We got to a mind flare and the mind flare cast disintegration on him. And yeah, there like he failed to save and there was just nothing that could be done. Like, he was just gone and you know, one minute he was standing there, like one minute he was standing there smiling at everybody and the next day ceased to exist at a molecular level. So hopefully this will be another memory that I have forgotten. And yes, it seems that it is. It seems that it is. All right. Roll another five. Got to re-roll. Two. Already crossed off. Got to re-roll. One. Sound or voice? Describe their voice sound. Was it a deep sound or maybe a bit higher? What did you feel when you heard their voice? What did you miss? What do you remember? So for their sound, it was definitely light and playful. 
All right, they didn't have a they didn't have a deep resonating voice. It was very it was very light, very fast talking, very excited. They were always excited every time Jarl Axel came by. Mark was always the one talking about how nicely Jarl Axel was dressed, you know, and just hearing that excitement in their voice. Hopefully that will be something that hopefully that'll be something I am able to recall. Ooh, barely, barely. It was hanging on a two. It switched to a four. Luckily, I do get to remember how they sounded. Rolling next, we get a four. Describe their movement. How did they walk? What was their posture? So I'm going to say constant. Their movement was constant. Again, they were a ball of energy. So they moved around a lot. They bounced around a lot. They were constantly in motion, regardless of what the situation was. And I get to recall that memory. Outstanding. All right, so next memory. Got a five, got a re-roll. Six, got a re-roll. Another four, so more movement. More movement. So the thing about Mark was Mark didn't really walk as much as he kind of strutted. Again, very, very playful, very flamboyant, very out there with their presence. So the typical mundane walking one foot in the other that wasn't that wasn't mark's way mark mark kind of glided and strutted about but unfortunately i i can't even re it was so distinctive and i can't seem to recall i can't seem to recall how that went just such a distinctive movement and i can't remember it anymore as i rolled tails on my as i roll tails on my ability to keep that all right so we are running out of memories for mark all right got another one so once again this is going to be sound before i get there's going to be another sound voice type thing and before i go and describe that memory i'm actually just going to go ahead and roll to see if i retain it i do so i do I recall another piece of how they sounded and that would be the comforting way they spoke with their friends. Mark was very good at helping to calm people down, especially his traveling companion. And I am glad I get to remember how that sounded. Once again, another one. So another sound and another four. Man, <laughs> this is funny because in real life, I can't remember anything else about how Mark sounded. So we're going to go ahead and just move on to the end game. As I said, the gameplay continues to be roll for a new memory, roll to see if you, or flip a coin to see if you keep it. So with the end game, unfortunately, memories fade. Desperately, we try to keep a grasp on the remembrance of our loved ones. But without the sensations, the descriptions, the images, they are lost to us, drifted away in time. When all the parts have been crossed out, no candle is burning and there is nothing left to recall. Write down one final word, a name, a feeling, a color, an object. Maybe, just maybe, it'll keep them close. Relight one of the candles. Remember them forever. Gone, but not forgotten. Memory is a way of holding on to the things you love. The things you are. The things you never want to lose. Kevin Arnold. So that is to keep ghosts alive. So a very interesting game, a very short game. As you saw, we accomplished gameplay in what? Five, 10 minutes. Definitely not something that you're going to be playing often because a subject matter can be a little, a little intense, especially if you start drawing too much from personal experience. B, it is a very repetitive gameplay. It is a very repetitive loop that because you have to fill in the narrative blanks in order for that loop to be fun, you start to run out, you can start to run out of ideas very fast. Like, as you saw, I kept rolling for sound or voice and I kept rolling to remember things. And after a while, there's just only so much that you can remember. Now, part of this might be because I have object permanence issues and I haven't thought about Mark in depth. 
in years. And part of it is, you know, again, it's been a couple years since I've played with that character. So, like, it's been a couple years since I played with that character. It was a D&D &D character. You know, it's there were just so many layers of abstraction that remembering how things went can be, like, remembering how things actually were can be kind of difficult. But it is definitely a very interesting game concept. I do like it. I did enjoy it. It is a, it will get added to the very reflexive games that I've played. All right. So this is very reflexive and almost meditative, very similar to, very similar to some parts of her Odyssey and very similar to Forget Me Not. Honestly, if I actually read this stuff before I played it, I might not have done this this week because... I did Forget Me Not two weeks ago. So these games do have very, very similar, very similar play styles. They are, they are different. They, they do work differently mechanically, but the overall, like the overall message, the overall theme is very similar. So now if you liked Forget Me Not, you're going to like to keep Ghosts Alive. If you like to keep Ghosts Alive, you're going to like Forget Me Not. So at least you have that going for you. But yeah, it's like I said, it's just a case of you have to you have to dig real deep, especially once you get past like the first or second prompt in order to keep finding stuff for this. So that type of that type of gameplay is not a sit down and play like the like the book recommended at the start. You know, this is something you play over the course of a day. This is something that you play over a period of time. You know, again, like Forget Me Not, this can be another this can be another good supplement for your TTRPGs, for your other games. Pull this one out and use it as sort of a closure episode. I think this I think this one would end up working out a little bit stronger for the party than it would for or than something like forget me not forget me not is definitely great for general population because forget me not encourages negative emotions as well this one is fairly positive throughout so this one is definitely more like this one would definitely be a good closure episode for your party if one of your player characters died you know, and then also if you're playing in person, pull out the candles, pull out the candles, play with the candles. Just as each memory is forgotten, the fading to blackness followed by the relighting of the single candle. Like that is just some very powerful imagery right there. That's a very powerful ritual. Now I might be a little bit biased because growing up, I was in an organization called Demole, which had a very similar public ceremony involving lights and those lights representing the various aspects of what we taught. And at one point during the, at one point during the ceremony, you go and you extinguish all the lights, but then you turn a single one back on. And so that does have a, that does have a lot of power connected to it. That type of imagery is very, powerful to go from darkness to a single point of light to go from hopelessness to a single beacon to cling to and it would make for a very it would make for a very lovely funeral ritual for a world for a culture and for your party so again i think that's where the best option for this lies use forget me not for like how everybody else will remember the character, but use this for how the party will find their closure. Because even as, even as sad as the loss of these memories can be, there are the, there are the psychological trappings of closure because a, you get to keep all the memories that you remembered. B, 
again, all the candles going out one by one, it's a lot easier to it's a lot easier to kind of guess when it's gonna happen as opposed to in gameplay where a character might just suddenly not exist anymore because they got hit by a disintegration ray. So seeing all the candles go out one by one would definitely help add some finality to that. And then again, the relighting of that single candle surrounded by the memories you were able to keep. I think that, I think that provides some powerful closure and comfort to the party members. But that's just my two cents on how to uh, how to potentially use this in your games. Because again, it's a good concept. I like the concept. I do. You know, it's just again, it's rough to it can be rough to actually play by yourself. But if you want to check it out, if you want to check it out and you want to give it a go, then you can find it on itch for two dollars and fifty cents now go ahead and do that like it is totally worth the price and you can find this at sandra catherineitchio slash two dash keep dash ghost dash alive or you can check the links down below and while you're down there go ahead and check out the other links for the black dragon dungeon company included in that are ways you can help support this channel Again, liking, commenting, sharing, those are all free ways that you can help support us, help us reach new listeners, help us continue to grow. But if you really enjoy us and you want a more financial support to offer, then we do have a Patreon that is patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. For a couple bucks a month, you're going to get early access to all of our videos you're going to get access to several of the games that we've written. You're going to get access to some free content such as the random stories and whatnot that I've been inspired to create after playing some of these games, such as the random short I came up with after playtesting the game Galati. So there are, there are benefits over there. There are things over there to go check out. Again, a couple bucks a month, you can help keep the lights on, the home fires burning, and the dragons in their caves. But regardless, regardless of whether you do that or not, I still thank you for watching. And remember, I must ask y'all to stay awesome. You've been listening to Lonely TTRPG, the solo TTRPG live play and review. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review. You can also reach us at Twitter at BDDC underscore pod or at Black Dragon Dungeon Company at gmail.com. If you really like us, you can consider supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Black Dragon Dungeon Company. Thank you so much.